Hi, DM Dango here with another review from the DM's Guild. This time we're looking at Last Flickering Light. So Last Flickering Light is an adventure module design in, in what they say is designed for from 5th to 10th level characters um, of a you know, standard party size of 4, which should run you about eight hours or so. Now in my experience looking at everything that's contained within the module, that that spreads quite wide. In terms of what's actually contained in the way it is written, I'd say probably you're looking at eighth to tenth maybe on a push, depending on card party composition and depending on kind of how how, how good your players are at dealing with traps and that's a big part of this whole thing and that's kind of moves right nicely on to kind of who this is for. This adventure module is designed very much around the Tomb of Annihilation, Tomb of Horrors style of adventure. Heavy on traps, heavy on lethality, heavy on uh, heavy on horror and pain and death and destruction. Um, the the main themes of this this entire adventure are around centered around Thera's doom. The very basic premise is, is that there are a bunch of towns, and slowly but surely there have been reports coming out from them that say something is wrong. Guards have been seen killing each other, beating each other, and you know just generally slowly sinking into madness, and. It's, it's from that premise that you build the rest of the adventure, and it kind of goes on from there. It's like, well, after that, after that happened, then the orcs, or, or insert your, your uh, roaming band of mercenaries, ne'er-do-wells, or monsters that caused some kind of problem. You're sent to investigate. The only information you have is maybe the orcs are responsible for it, but your patron says, that's probably not true because generally orcs are this kind of malicious anyways. So you go to investigate and you find this dungeon crawl, um, and you're a very traditional dungeon crawl, and you uh, traverse through the dungeon, find the, the, the source of the problems and deal with it. Now I'm not going to reveal much about that because I think as a player, you want to try and convince your DM to run this for you, um, to, to experience it for the first time. I'm a big proponent of the the joy of DMing, the joy of being a player in a game you haven't seen is experiencing things for the first time. So I'm going, I do try to avoid those kinds of spoilers in my, uh, in, in my reviews. Um, cause I think you, you, you can, there's, there's no reason as a player, you shouldn't be able to buy an adventure module that you've been told is a good one, or you think might be a good one that has themes that you're interested in that, and you can say, DM, play this one. I want I want to play this one because I would really like to do that. As players, you have the right to request to your DM to play things. And this is a good one for that kind of thing. Um, now, from that though, there are, I'll go into kind of what I like and what I don't like. So the things I do like about the adventure module are things like um, the puzzles themselves are structured very well. They aren't completely lethal for the most part. There are a few that are a little, they get a little close to that, but I think they're solvable generally. I think for players that are more used to puzzle style mechanics or more used to the way things, these things are structured, they will be fine. They won't have a huge problem with it. They'll, they'll traverse through it. They might lose a character or two, but these kinds of modules are designed for that kind of um, eventuality. And at that kind of level, <laughs> even if you did lose a character, raise dead, you have it, use it. <laughs> um, I know a lot of DMs do kind of um, weaken that ability a little bit, um, but uh, <laughs> I, I, and I, to be fair, in my own campaigns, well, right now I'm running through Annihilation, so. Uh, Raised Dead really doesn't come into play in this case, so um, it's interesting from that perspective. Um, moving right along, so some of the things I don't, I, I didn't like or did or felt kind of hurt the module overall. Um, there are a lot of traps in this. It would have been nice to have more than the than, than the amount of combat encounters that are presented inside of it. Um, there are 
currently two, um, one kind of halfway through and another one at the very end, because that's kind of the way you, you structure these things. It would be nice to have like smaller combat encounters where you could run into like a small band of things as a result of you messing something up. Um, there is, a, there is a potential combat encounter in there, but I think it's not designed to be a combat encounter. It's more designed to, to kind of like, it's a puzzle with enemies that are part of the puzzle. So it's a little odd um, in that respect. Um, the other thing I, I felt detracted from it is that the maps that were created for it aren't, um, aren't of the, uh, no, I want to say they're not of the best quality, but that's not fair. They are, they are purposeful. They are useful, but they lack a lot of some of the things that I've seen in, in other adventure modules, that have gone the extra mile and kind of added that extra bit of polish and touch. And speaking of polish and touch, this is very much almost a word document put into kind of the form factor of an adventure module. It would have been nice to see, see them use something like Homebrewery or um, one of the more official um, formatting tools to kind of just give it that extra bit of polish. And that's kind of a lot of what this needs is in terms of bringing it up to that next level. Um, and that moves me nicely right along to kind of what my rating is for this this module. Um, I think it's going to have to be a 4 out of 5, and the reason it doesn't gain that last star is a lot of those polished pieces that can kind of help it get to the next level. Now, I think this is probably the first time, and the way it was described to me, it was like a community project. Um, the um, the person who, who sent it to me, and I'll link, put links down in the um, description below as to where it came from and who actually created it. I think this is the first time they've created an adventure module on their own. Um, so it, it kind of doesn't surprise me they didn't know a lot of the kind of normal, um, normal processes for these kinds of things. Um, but it's just a general piece of advice for anyone who wants to create these kinds of things. Ask. Go on Twitter. Use the DMC Guild hashtag. Hell, even just at me directly, and I will ping this directly to all my followers. And a lot of my followers are very prolific in the DMs Guild. And they will they're very good and they're very kind and very, very helpful about asking what should I do? How should I format this? How should I, you know, structure this? What should this look like? What do I need to do? And they'll ask questions. I'm actually really surprised nobody's like done a thing to say, here's how you do this. Now, I would do this, obviously, but to be fair, I haven't released anything on the DMs Guild yet, so I don't think I'm in that right boat. But I digress a bit. Um, so, <laughs> my point is that I think this is a 4 out of 5, only because the things that you would normally get in the very top tier of things, the things that I give 5 stars to, are things about they've done the extra bit to kind of polish it up. They've done um, more proper maps. They've, they've taken that extra thing and gone, well, what do we what do we have in something like, there's some tools that you can get that will do maps that are very similar to this, but they add those extra polishes like tiles, tile-based um, tile based systems that allow you to structure things properly and kind of build things up and kind of do like a really nice, it looks really nice, kind of like just from like layman, but um, it doesn't have that kind of hand-drawn MS Paint feel that the ones here do. The ones here work, but I think they could have been done a little bit better. The other thing is, is that the obviously the formatting of the thing looks like it was done in a Word document, and it probably was, and there's nothing wrong with that, but adding that extra little bit of polish gives it legitimacy and gives it, um, when you're reading it as a, as a DM or, or even seeing it on the DM scale as a player, you kind of get this feeling that they there's a perception with that, and it kind of hurts it a little bit, e even if it's unjustifiable, um, unjustifiably, I guess is the right way um, of, of putting it. Um, and there, and that those kinds of forming things also help with other things like readability, and also things like um, the ability for you to work out kind of where you're supposed to kind of come in as a DM or or, or you know, to say these things, like the, the boxes that say, do this thing. And those boxes are present, but they're less less obvious than they would be in, in the more official format tools. So, thank you. Um, that's my review for Last Flickering Light. 
Um, please do remember to like and subscribe to this video, and please leave a comment down below anything you'd like me to have a look at next, um, and I'll try and get to it. Thank you. Peace out.